Good evening, everybody. Another Buckeye win under the belt. Ohio State beats Rutgers 49-27. to uh, Good game. Justin, what did you think? Uh, about what we expected in the first half, Ohio State completely dominant. They had five touchdowns and six drives. Justin Fields, I mean, we say it every week, but it's just – it's, it's a treat to watch this guy play football. I mean, six total touchdowns, five passing touchdowns. Once again, more than 300 yards through the air. He ran for one. Uh, Ohio State's offense, man, just clicking on all cylinders. The run game, it wasn't great. They were really good against Penn State last week. Uh, they had over 200 yards, but if you look at it, the punt, that fake punt by Steel Chambers, that counts for about 30-some yards. So they could have been a little bit better in the run game, um, but you're really picking hairs there. The defense, it was really a tale of two first halves, right? It was just mm -hmm. the first half, they did a phenomenal job. They held Rutgers at 83 yards. I mean, they were giving up nothing. They forced like five punts. They had a turnover. Justin Hilliard forced that fumble and recovered it and it looked like they were going to give nothing up the entire game it was really good for yeah half. and then the second half happens and they just kind of crumbled I mean they gave up a punt return for a touchdown and the secondary they were just missing so many tackles so many guys were just wide open in the middle of the field and it was just very uncharacteristic for Ohio State and it's been a problem now for the past two weeks for the defense where they'll have a great first half and then they're going to fall apart there in the second half, specifically in the secondary, and they did it once again. And it's going to be very concerning, especially for Kerry Combs, as he tries to navigate to navigate his way without Cam Cam Brown, who lost for the season now because of an Achilles injury. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering how they would respond. The answer is great in the first 30 minutes, not so great in the last 30. Certainly. And just so everybody knows, we are waiting right now for the Ohio State postgame press conferences. Ryan Day and a few players will probably come out and speak. We heard from Kerry Combs, I believe, last week, was it? Or was it the week before mm -hmm. he yeah. spoke? Yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah, maybe it was so, actually week one. Yeah, so it's been yeah, a while. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. So so we're waiting for, for them to come out right now. And I'm sure a lot of the questions will surround that second half, especially um, the defense that you were just talking about there, Justin. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, the defense and – I don't know what the answer is. Is it tackling drills? I don't. I don't have the answer, and maybe they won't tonight because you know it's a it's a quick snapshot after the game to try to figure out what's going on. Uh, because you know you could blame the secondary, and Rutgers didn't have that many passing yards. If you look at it, they had 229 yards passing, so it's not a lot. But still, it's kind of concerning when you only give up three points in the first half, and then you give up a total of 27 points in the game. So obviously, it's not what Ohio State standard is. Offense, it is. Yeah. They're now 7-0 against Rutgers the past seven times they've played, and they have scored at least 49 points in all seven of those games. They scored exactly 49 tonight. So you, you don't see really any problems from Ohio State from an offensive standpoint. You could say you want to run the ball a little bit better. But defense, there are things that can be picked apart, especially when they play Maryland next week. This is a team that's passing the ball with the best of them in the Big Ten. Great Today, quarterback. Jared was just talking about phenomenal, it during our, yeah. our Tulia, there. Yeah, Tulia Tungavailoa, he had a great game today against Penn State. They went on the road and beat Penn State in Happy Valley. It was 35-19. Maryland also put up 45 points against Minnesota, so that team can ball, and they have a very good quarterback. So if Ohio State doesn't get things fixed, and if they don't play a full 60 minutes, they could be in for, for a little bit of trouble when they go on the road and play the Terrapins next week. Certainly. Um, again, for those who are just joining us, thank you so much for watching. We are in post-game coverage after the Ohio State game just went final. They beat Rutgers 49-27. We are waiting for uh, head coach Ryan Day to come out, as well as some um, players to do their post-game press conference and answer some reporter questions there. A lot of them, as Justin and I have been discussing, will likely center around that second half and uh, the defense in the – shortfalls that they are having especially in the second half of the game um trick play university there <laughs> rutgers that was kind yeah. of crazy and and it worked so, like you, you, you see a lot yeah. you know you don't see that many attempts per game usually um but you normally don't see all of these trick plays working either what was that all about I think they were just really trying to do what they could to try to put some points up because obviously nothing was working in the first half. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they, they went with a little bit of everything. They had that direct snap that went for 66 yards. They had a big man touchdown thrown yeah. to an offensive lineman. They had the punt, and they, <laughs> the guy caught it, threw it all the way across the field, and he takes it for a touchdown. That was uh, Bo Melton on that touchdown. The opening kickoff, they did the same thing. They caught the ball, threw it all the way across the field. I think that was just Rutgers acknowledging they don't have – 
<laughs> they don't have the same talent as Ohio State or the same coaching level, but they were just trying to do everything they could to be a part Certainly, of this Justin, game. Certainly, Justin, I don't mean to interrupt you. With the, we have the press conference starting here good right deal. now. I'm not sure who's um, coming out the talk. Um, looks like is it, um, Justin it is Fields. Justin Fields. I don't think we've uh, reached our full potential, so of course we're going to continue to get better each and every week. So, you know, I, I just hope we, we do that, and hopefully that'll be enough. All righty, we'll go next to Stephen Means from Cleveland.com. Stephen. Hey, Justin, you had a couple balls where you kind of threw it in some tight, tight windows, or maybe you threw it a little later, but it was still a little accurate and on point. Can you talk about specifically that, the one touchdown to Chris Olave in the corner where, he's, where you're rolling out right and he's kind of coming along with you and what you saw there? Uh, yeah, it was just a naked play. I mean, you know, just – it, it, it worked out kind of like a, a scramble drill. So, I mean, we, we just work on it in practice and it, and it just happened like, like that in the game. So, you know, we, we try to practice how we play and that's how it turned out. Any reason you waited so long maybe to throw it? All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Austin. Justin, when you say that, that you guys don't think that you're operating at your peak, uh, where would you like to see this offense get better? I mean, I, I think we can get – better in, in all aspects to be honest with you i mean you know that that's that's what the film's for so we're just gonna watch the film on tonight and uh, come tomorrow and see what aspects we, we need to improve on okay we'll go next to bill rabinowitz from the columbus dispatch bill yes justin it looks like the passing game the timing and the routes are becoming more sophisticated or maybe you just have so much time to go through all your progressions is the passing game becoming more advanced um I feel like that's a question for Coach Day. I mean, I think we have a few new concepts, but I, I wouldn't say it's more advanced. I think our coaches do a great job teaching it to us, so we understand it clearly, and we're, we're able to run it like we've been running it for a long time. So I wouldn't necessarily call it more advanced or, you know, less advanced or, or whatever you're trying to get out, to be honest with you. Okay, next up, Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Justin, what do you feel like are the biggest ways that you're playing better right now through three games than you were last season? Um, all aspects, to be honest with you. I, I can't really point out a few. I'm just trying to, you know, play the best I can. Um, I feel like uh, I'm, I'm just trying to, you, you know, just, just do out there and, 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 and do my best, to be honest with you. But I'm not sure, you know, you know what specific things I'm, I'm doing better. At. I'm just trying to improve in, in, in all aspects of the game. Okay, next up, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Nathan. Nathan, you're muted. You hear me now? Yeah, you're uh, Justin, you guys got a boost from DeMario there, just a couple plays. Um, he hasn't had a lot of opportunity to participate on offense. Just what can he bring to this offense if he were able to get more of an opportunity? Yeah, DeMario, he's a, he's a great player. He's a dynamic player. He can play in the slot. He can play running back. So, I mean, you know, he's just a great uh, all-around player. And, and, and the thing about him is, is, is he's a, you know, a huge leader for our team. You know, I think he does a great job leading the guys in the receiver room. So, you know, he's a, he's a big help and he's, he's very dynamic. So, I feel like we can use him in a multitude of ways. All right, got time for just a couple more. Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Tony, you're up. Justin, did you expect to play this late into the game? To be honest, no, I did not. And I, I don't think anybody did, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, I, I think we let up too many points in the, in the second half. And Coach Dave was just talking about that. So uh, what, what we need to focus on is, is, is just playing the second half better and, you know, kind of that, that's what we need to get better at. All right, we'll go next to Patrick Murphy from 24-7 Sports. Patrick. Justin, we've talked to you about Garrett a lot, but three straight games over 100 yards receiving. What is he doing that, that has elevated his game this year to make him this receiver? I mean, he's doing what he's always done, and that's just ball out. I mean, from the second he got here at Ohio State, he's been balling out. Uh, the first spring he came in, I remember he was making crazy plays. So, uh, you know, the coaches saw his potential. I mean, I, I know the players saw what he could do on the field. I mean, he does it all the time in practice. So, y'all are just seeing what, what he does um, all the time. All right, and last question for Justin. We'll go to Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Spencer. Justin, how much better are you right now than you were week one? Um, I'm not – I don't, I don't like, know how much better. I don't – feel me? I, I don't know to put, a, like, a number on it, but I feel like I've improved, um, you know. And like I said before, we're, we're going to continue to improve each and every week, but I don't know how to, like, a answer your question, like, 
number wise, like how much better I've gotten. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm just trying to, you know, win every game and, and, and go out there and do the best I can. So that's my job. All right, Justin, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the time and, and great job tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. That was Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields giving an update. And now it looks like Justin Hilliard will take the mic. We'll start the questioning with um, Stephen Means from Cleveland.com. Stephen. Hey, Justin, you finally got a chance to get out there on the field after everything that happened in the last two weeks. And you were able to make some plays. Just talk about that force fumble that you were able to do, just being able to be out there. Yeah, this whole offseason has been the focus is just, you know, keep getting better because I know this is my last shot at playing. So. Being out there today means so much just because I know the last couple of weeks haven't gone exactly how I want it to go. But I mean, overall, we got a lot to work on, but it was, it was great to be back out there. All right, next up, we'll go to Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Austin. Hey, Justin. Uh, Justin Fields was just up there talking about how the message in the locker room was to finish. I mean, can you describe what it was like to play in the second half where the game was really never in doubt? I don't know if it was you guys checked out or you know, what it was like just to get through that when you knew that the win was already pretty much put away. Yeah, obviously that's going to be the focus right now is playing in the second half. Um, we know we got to practice better. We know we got to finish. Um, I know on defense, tackling especially, um, it is something we will work on and something we'll get fixed. All right, next up, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Joey, you're up. Justin, um, we heard last week uh, about you being un unable to play due to the, the false positive test. What was kind of your issue in, in week one, and what, is, what have the last uh, two weeks been like for you not being able to play until this week? Yeah, week one, I kind of had a little minor injury that kind of set me back a little bit. But on um, week two, I was ready to go until, I guess, the morning of the game, Saturday morning, we have the um, kind of easy 15-minute test. That came back positive, went straight to the hospital, did the – um, the more in-depth, I think, PCR test, and that came back, um, both came back negative. So um, yeah, it was a tough process. It's obviously, that was my last time being able to play Penn State. Um, yeah, it sucks, but, you know, we're moving on. Okay, we'll go next to Nathan Barrett from Cleveland.com. Nathan. Justin, were you mad? I mean, were you upset that, that, to have that game taken away from you last week, and especially considering that uh, you got, you know, you, you did pass the test. It seemed like what the protocol would have been set up to, to let you play, and you still couldn't. Yeah, obviously I was frustrated. I wanted to be a part of that big game. I'm playing Penn State with my brothers for the last time. Um, obviously there was frustration there, a little bit of anger, but um, that was set aside quickly because obviously we had a goal to win that game, and we did. So, yeah, we're moving forward from that. All right, next up, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Hey, Justin, can you just walk us through that, that play where you uh, stripped the ball and recovered it? Yeah, that's something, that's something we practice on. The coaches do a great job of preparing us each week of different things offense are going to try to get us with. And, um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was glad I was able to make that play. All right, two more questions, and we will start with Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Justin, when you go through what you went through the first two weeks after everything you've gone through in recent years, does it make you appreciate every game, every play you're able to make that much more? Oh, yeah. That's been the whole message. Um, something I've been trying to preach the whole season is just trying to get some of these younger guys, even some older guys, to realize, you know, how short this can be. And nothing's for granted. So take it, live in the moment and take every, every single game, every single practice. You know, do, do the best you can to keep getting better. All right, and last question tonight for Justin. We'll go to Clay Hall from WSYX. Clay. Justin, can you describe the urgency that you have to play with in this kind of small uh, survive and advance kind of environment to, to, to stay clean, move on to the, the next week, what it takes? Yeah, there's a, there's a big sense of urgency. Coach Day has been um, hitting on that the whole, the whole year. Obviously, we know that um, we can't miss a game. We can't be off on one game or – we know, we know the consequences that can be. Um, so the focus is I don't even want to talk about any other game except for the next game because I believe that will just keep our minds focused on anything else one, one game at a time. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate your time tonight.
That was Justin Hillier. Likely up right, next Chris, is Ryan Day. Thank you very much Day. for joining us. Um, yes, we'll start, we will we'll start the questioning is. with Patrick Murphy from 247 Sports. Patrick. Chris, another big day for, for the passing game. What's clicking so well between you guys, Justin, Garrett? Every, everyone seems to just be a, a big part of this. Uh, this is someone's chemistry along us. I mean, we worked all, all off season. Uh, we got the, the, that long break. Uh, we didn't start to uh, about week eight. So uh, we, we just kept, kept, kept connecting over the summer and uh, over the fall. And uh, it's just showing up in the, in the first three games. So. All right, we'll go next to Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill. Hey, Chris. Um, I know that the tight ends maybe don't always catch a ton of passes. It kind of varies week to week. But, but what do you see when you're out there in terms of those guys and their route running and, and maybe opening up space for, for guys like yourself and Garrett? Uh, we, got, we got great tight ends and, and Luke and Jeremy uh, Ruggert. Uh, we, we've been getting the ball uh, to them a little bit uh, uh, more. So uh, I feel like they're, they're good in the, in the passing game. And, uh, they open up a lot of things for, for us on the outside. So, Okay, we'll go next to Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Doug. Chris, I think they, you guys took a deep shot to you right after Rutgers tried the onside kick and, and you guys recovered it. When they're doing all those trick plays, when they have the ball and that kind of stuff, is there a feeling sort of on your offensive side of the ball, like, okay, well, if they want to do trick plays, then – here we're going to keep our, you know, keep our, our foot on the gas kind of thing. Uh, not at all. I mean, we, we just want to stick to, to Buckeye football, and that's what we did. And we just uh, we wanted to take those shots down the field, and that's what, we, that's what we wanted to do. So. All right, next up, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Chris, from your vantage point, in what areas have you seen Justin Fields get even better this year? Uh, I feel like he just got more comfortable in the offense. Uh, just getting all those reps with us on the outside uh, over the summer, like I said, and in the fall, uh, our chemistry is down, and uh, we just got to keep getting better as the season goes on. All right, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Hey, Chris, just how much faith do you have in Justin to be able to, to fit the ball in, in such tight windows? You know, the touchdown pass in the corner of the end zone is one example, but just, you know, how much faith does that give you in him, or do you have in him, and how much – confidence does it give you that if you just get a little bit open, the ball's going to get there? Uh, that's, that's the connection we got. I mean, uh, I mean, if I get open, it doesn't want to put the ball where it's going to be. Uh, as long as the other receivers. So. All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Austin. Chris, on that particular play, did you, did you feel like you were open? Because it looked like from up here, like there was no way that Justin could get that ball to where you were. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like we was open. We was, uh, they ran a cover two. That was, a, that was the same thing we schemed up in practice, and uh, we brought it out to the game. And uh, Safety was still in his backpedal, and Justin uh, threw a dot. And, uh, we ended up connecting. So. All right, we got time for two more. Uh, we'll go to Stephen Needs from Cleveland.com. Stephen. Chris, kind of to that point, what's the most impressive ball you've caught from Justin this year? Um. Probably the one last week, uh, Penn State, on the out and up. Uh, it was perfect. It was perfect ball, but it was a tough catch at the same time. But that was probably the best ball, I think. And final question for Chris will come from Clay Hall, WSYX. Clay. Hey, Chris. A couple, couple of the guys before you said maybe uh, the second half wasn't what you wanted. How would you suggest, or maybe what did Coach say, to ramp up the effort in the second half so that you? Finish just like you started. Uh, we just got to close out the games. I mean, we came out came out uh, at halftime, thirty-five to three. Uh, we just got to we just got to put a cap on it and uh, close it out. All right, Chris. Thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on the game. Thanks. All right, Coach Day, thank you for joining us. Um, if you'd like, we can open up with an opening statement or go straight to questions. Can't hear. 
Brian's muted. We can't hear. Coach Day is muted. The podium's muted, Mike. We can't hear the coach, Mike. I know. I'll let him know. Thanks. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I was just saying, you know, it, it is a tale of two halves. Uh, you know, really proud of the way our guys came out and played, you know, 35 to three at halftime. Uh, really, you know, a pretty dominant first half. Guys played well. Um, and, and then in the second half, just didn't play very great. Um, you know, some penalties, um, you know, some big plays, the, the special teams, uh, you know, touchdown. And uh, we didn't close them out. Like we said, you know, we had some, some other guys in the game, late in the game. And, you know, that kind of is what it is. But, um, you know, we should have really dominated in the first, uh, you know, five or six minutes of the second half and then allow some of our other guys to get in the game. That didn't happen. And um, so that's, that's something we got to get back and work on and, and look to close it out. And, uh, you know, not to make excuses for our guys, but one of the things that's real is, you know, you go up 35 to three and, uh, you know, it's whatever time it is, 8.30, 9 o'clock on a Saturday night, the, the, the stadium's empty. There's no, no juice in the, in the stadium. And so we have to do that. We have to bring our own energy. And, and that's a challenge for us that we've got to do. And, um, you know, it's something that we're going to really address this week and talk about, um, you know, coming out of that second half. You know, we, we did it in the first game. You know, I thought we, we did a decent job last week as well. But, but this week, not, not very good. So, uh, you know, we'll focus on that this week. All right, we'll open up the questions with Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill. Ryan, uh, how much had uh, missed tackles been on your radar coming into this game? And, and what did you think of that tonight, particularly with some of the guys in your secondary? Yeah, I thought in the first half it was, uh, it was pretty good. I mean, I thought we were tackling well and running the ball. And, um, you know, I have to look at the film and see, who, you know, who the culprits were. But there were some missed tackles. All right, next up, Rob Aller from the Columbus Dispatch. Rob. Hey, Ryan, have you ever seen uh, as many NFL throws from Justin as you saw to, today? And when did you know he was a generational talent? Pretty early on. Um, I knew he had the potential to be. Um, I still think he has the potential to be uh, special. I still don't think he's there, but he's getting better every week. And um, when he puts the work in and he puts the time in to understand what we're trying to get done and uh, he practices well, uh, but but that's something that we're really going to strive for is, is trying to become an even better practice team in all three phases. I think the better we practice, the better we're going to play. I think when you look at, across college football, it was a crazy day. And, you know, one of the things that I think happened this week was we didn't practice on Tuesday across the country. And uh, anytime you, you change up a routine, strange things happen. And, uh, and, and, I, and I thought, you know, for us to come out the way we did, that was great. Just disappointed about the second half. But we got to practice better. Uh, if we want to be where we need to be, if we want to be a great team, it has, to, it has to happen, especially on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, and so that's something, again, that's going to be a focus this, this, uh, this week. What about Justin throwing those tight, hitting those tight windows? I mean, you know, down the field, you know, as good as I've been around. I mean, he's really accurate down the field. I thought the last throw to Chris, um, he made that look like it was a 12-yard out. And I got to look back on film to see where it was. But that thing had gas. And it was in the hole, and uh, it was one heck of a throw. Right, we'll go next to Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Doug. Ryan, you sort of touched on this, but in the second half, early on, maybe you had some couple first-team guys on defense who maybe missed a few things. Later on, you had some backups in there who maybe missed a few things. How do you differentiate the evaluation of that of, hey, maybe we gave up some points with some inexperienced guys versus maybe we gave up stuff with our first teamers. Well, I, there's no excuse for anybody missing tackles, for, for one. But to your point, we're going to have to look at it on film and just figure out exactly what, what happened. Um, but our expectation is that, you know, when, when the second group gets in there, they, they, they pick it up from, from where the first team left off. And, um, and we pull away in the second half. That, that's the expectation around here. So if that's not happening, uh, then we got to get that fixed as well. Uh, but to your point, we got to figure out, you know, exactly where all that stuff happened in the second half and, um, and then get it fixed. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan. Ryan, have you ever seen a team attempt as many trick plays as Rutgers did tonight? No. No, that was um, – especially the onside kicks. It was like a New York sidewalk. I mean, they were going back and forth and back and forth. And I, and I thought our team did a really good job of handling it. 
Um, I thought we did a good job of handling the, f the first throwback. I thought we did it, you know, we were in a good spot on the second throwback and we just didn't tackle them. Um, it was just poor tackling. I thought that, um, you know, we did a better job with Pooch. I thought Jake came in and made, made, you know, did a good job of getting the ball up in the air and he looked pretty smooth um, kicking. And then and the, the fake punt, because we wanted to be aggressive. We knew that Greg was going to be, be aggressive with special teams, have some different things. We didn't quite know it was going to be all of those things, but, uh, but we wanted to be aggressive as well. And I, and I thought the fake punt really allowed us to kind of pull away in the first half. All right, next up, Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade. Hey, Ryan, you talked earlier this week how almost just getting a game played is a victory in itself. Um, you guys were a little sloppy tonight. Do, do you kind of evaluate games this season differently as well? No, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I go into a game and like, okay, if we can just win this game, don't worry about what it looks like. Let's just win it. And then you get into it and, and you just, you know, you're competitive and so you want everything perfect. Um, but like you said, with, with so many different things that went on this year, uh, but that's no excuse. You know, we're, we're not making excuses at all. Uh, we we got to figure that out. We got to get it fixed. We got to clean up the penalties. Uh, we did have a turnover. And, and you know, there's just some things that, that, that shouldn't have happened in that game. And, um, and that's where we grow. Um, we don't have the, the non-conference games early on to kind of build off of that. You know, the, the first time that some of these guys are in the game is right now in a conference game. And so, uh, you know, great, great learning opportunity this week. We had to get on that film, get those things fixed, and allow our, uh, our team to build. Okay, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Ryan, you know that Big Ten teams are not going to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. They're going to try to mix it up with deception and trick plays. I'm not sure that they're going to do it as much as Rutgers did, but how much preparation will you have to do for that and give your assessment on how prepared and how well you handled that tonight? At the last part, I didn't hear you. Yeah, could you give your assessment on how prepared you were for what Rutgers did and how yeah, well you handled no, it? I, I thought we did a great job. Um, you know, when you think about the throwback, the first one, we got it, we got it tackled, we got it nailed down. Um, all the onside kicks, you know, for, you know, we did, really did a good job there um, and, and handled it. I thought, um, you know, again, the throwback got us and, and we were in good position. We just didn't tackle. And then, and then we had the fake punt. So uh, overall, I thought we were, we were prepared um, and I thought we did a good job of it. And, you know, the idea was they were going to be aggressive. We weren't going to just be on the defensive because that's part of the, part of the issue. Like you're saying, you know that teams are going to try to steal possessions. We talk about it all the time, whether it's an onside kick, a fake punt, something like that. They're always going to try to steal possessions against us, and that's part of the deal. We can't always be, like, worried about that. We need to be aggressive. You know, that's why you know, we, we did the pop over last year. That's why we, you know, we did the fake punt today, because we, we also have to be on the offensive. And, and just because, you know, other teams are trying to do that to us, we got to make sure that, that we have stuff in place um, so that we're not on our heels. All right, next up, Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Austin. Ryan, this sounds kind of like a question I've asked you a bunch of times before, and you always try to appreciate the win and how hard they are. But how do you like, feel right now about it? Because you seem unhappy about some stuff, and others you can kind of understand because of the weirdness that you described. Like, how do you feel about this game? Well, if, if you asked me at halftime, I'd feel really good. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then after the game, you know, it's like um, just kind of flat just kind of flat, you know, want to get on the film and figure out exactly where it all was. Um, and, and I think really we just got to focus on practicing better. And I think if we practice better, we'll finish better. Um, but Hey, listen, any win, certainly like you said, any win this year, any conference win is a good win. And, uh, and there's a lot of good things out there. So it's not like we're going to sit here and talk about all the bad things. That was a good conference win. We're three and oh, uh, we're playing good football. We got a lot of good players on the team. We came out and played really, really well in the, in the first half. Um, but we're, we're critical, and that's a good thing. You know, we, we want perfection, and we're, we're looking for greatness. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Hey, Ryan, I appreciate it. Can I jump in real quick? Yep, of course. Clemson just lost to Notre Dame in double overtime on a day when Penn State and Michigan also lost. You guys can only control yourself, but when stuff like that happens, what does that just tell you about what this season is like? Yeah, it's, it's a strange season, Doug. Like, like I said before, you know, it was a strange week. There's so many things at play, you know, and, and we've talked about this before is, you know, you spend, uh, you know, an enormous amount of time talking about the testing and, 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 you know, avoiding exposing yourself to other people and the virus. And um, it's just, it's a different year. So, you know, we're just going to try to do everything we can to stay healthy again this week and, and then go be Maryland. Thank you, coach. Appreciate it. 
We'll have Tuff Borland up, and that'll conclude uh, interviews tonight. All right, Tuff, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. And we will start out with Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Tuff, uh, Ryan kind of brought up some of the, the issues you guys have with tackling tonight in the second half. What did you, what did you uh, think of the overall performance there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we started out strong. Um, started out um, the way we would want to start out a game. Um, obviously, it turned a little bit in the, in the, um, in the second half. And, um, I think I think that just comes back to practice habits, um, you know, stuff we do in day in and day out shows on the field. So um, getting that corrected, um, and just be more conscious of um, you know all the steps to tackle in practice. All right, next up, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated. Brendan. Hey, tough. Coach Day told us uh, a couple times earlier this week that he was really focused on how you guys could just incrementally be better day after day, practice after practice, game after game. And I, I realize this game was two very different halves, but how did you guys feel like you were better tonight than you had been the last couple of weeks? Um, certainly. I mean, I think um, coming out, we uh, played a lot of energy. Um, I don't know. I it's hard to it's hard to comment uh, on what exactly happened when you haven't watched the film yet. Um, so um, obviously the first half was very good. Um, second half a um, little different, but um, we'll uh, take it as it comes. Watch the film and get better from it. All right, got time for just three more. Uh, we will go to Dan Hope from Eleven Warriors. Dan. Yeah, tough. Being a guy who's a three-time captain, how much of a responsibility do you take it upon yourself when Ryan Day is saying you guys need to finish stronger to lead the team through that? Yeah, um, I, I, I will uh, be the first one to stay. You know, it starts with me. Um, you know, we kind of came out here. It's not an excuse. Um, you know, you're, you're up big at half. Um, you come out and you, you just kind of let the let, – left the – Took the foot off the gas, and um, that that starts with me. That can't happen. Um, so I'll take I'll take some of that. All right, we'll go next to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Tough. Ryan mentioned the, the the change in schedule this week. No Tuesday practice. I know that's usually one of your harder hitting practices. What was it like this week, not having that? And how did you make up for it? Yeah. Um, very very different week. Um, coming in on a Monday, um, but but um, that's not really an excuse. Um, you know, we pride ourselves on um, you know being a professional, no matter what the the circumstances are. So whether it's Monday, Tuesday, um, coming out, um, working on your craft, um, improving on the things you need to work on, uh, that's just really what we're focused on, no matter what what day we're practicing. And last question of the night will go to Patrick Murphy from 247 Sports. Patrick. Puff, Justin obviously has been through a lot in these last two weeks especially. Um, what was he able to give you, and what does it mean having him on the field uh, with you guys at linebacker? Yeah. Um, obviously last week it's just, it's just not fair. We were all, we were all heartbroken for him. Uh, guy that's given so much to this program. Uh, you just feel for him, but um, just the energy he brings on a daily basis is um, you know, those, those are the types of guys that, um, you know, mean, mean the most to your program and um, he brings it every single day. So credit to him. All right, tough. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time tonight. You guys. As if. All right, that wraps up this week's post-game press conference with the Ohio State players and head coach Ryan Day. Justin, what did you think of what they had to say there? Sorry, I can still hear them in my ear right oh, here. I'm going to take that out. That's all right. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, the big thing was they kind of focused on what those two different halves looked like. You know, it was 35-3 to three at halftime, and then it ended up being 49-27. to 27, And a lot of the focus was on the defense and a lot of missed tackles, uh, just kind of letting their foot off the gas. Ryan Day mentioned how weird it was, you know, coming back out of halftime. It's a 9 o'clock game, and there's nobody to kind of pick you back up. Yeah. And he said, we got to take care of that of our, ourselves. And then you had guys like Tuff Borland and, and Justin Hilliard say, you know, we just we really just missed a lot of tackles, and it's it just seemed like we weren't – as motivated going into that second half. The lead had a lot to do with that, I'm sure, but you got to play a full 60 minutes, especially when you're playing better teams. Yeah, I think it was good for him to point that out, too, especially because we don't really think of it. These are, like, very disciplined men, and they probably have, like, honestly, they probably go to bed at 10 o'clock, 10, <laughs> 10, 30, 11 o'clock every single yeah. night, and, you know, that's, you know, messes with their rhythm there when they've yeah. got to be up, and, like, you don't have the fans to get everybody going, so... Very interesting. Um, a lot of interesting games. Notre Dame just won. They stormed the field in South Bend. A lot of them did. Yeah. Wasn't it pretty sight? <laughs> no. So there's two points there. Obviously, a huge win for Notre Dame in that program. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence did not play. He was sidelined uh, for coronavirus protocols. Uh, he was actually on the sideline but couldn't play in the game. Mm -hmm. So Notre Dame... Uh, they beat Clemson. Clemson had 36 straight regular season wins, and that streak ends tonight. They lost double overtime, 47 to 40. Um, and then the scene afterwards, you had fans storming the field, and the entire field was taken up. I don't know what repercussions are going to look like for Notre Dame, but for letting that happen, I feel like something's going to come down on them. I don't know if that's in the form of quarantine, fines, what that looks like, but specifically you don't want people grouped together they had fans distance while sitting and then you have a scenario like that where everybody's on top of each other everybody's on top of each other yelling i mean yeah. it was just a bad look really yeah. overall I not mean, good for notre dame especially knowing that this game if the result ended up being notre dame was going to win that you had to have known that some fans were going to try to do this and they did just that so i don't know what it's going to look like for notre dame in the coming days it's a huge program win but they might be facing some serious repercussions after this. Certainly, and I wonder if the university will take um, action as well. We'll see. We'll um, see, so yeah. We and will. these two teams could play again, very likely will play again in the ACC championship. So Notre Dame moves to 7-0, and Clemson now 7-1, and and these two teams will probably play each other one more time in the ACC title game. So we'll see what comes of that. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, – it was a wild day in college football, especially in the Big Ten. Absolutely was. Uh, let's talk about that for a second before we sign off. Sure. Yeah, so you had uh, Michigan losing again. Indiana now 3-0. and They went and beat the Wolverines. Michigan State got pummeled by Iowa. And then you had Maryland shock the nation, really, and they beat Penn State 35-19. to And that's big because Ohio State is playing the Terrapins on the road next week. Maryland's now 2-1, and one, and uh, they're a very talented team. They've got that uh, quarterback back there, Tulia Tungavailoa, and he's just – you know, proving to be almost as good as his brother by what he's done at Maryland. It's a very small sample size, granted. You know, he's only played three games, but, you know, they put up 35 on a talented Penn State defense. They put up 45 against Minnesota. So we'll see what they can do against the Buckeyes. And the Buckeyes secondary has left a lot to be desired these past two weeks in the second half specifically. So we'll see how that game looks against Maryland. You know what, I, th I know it's a weird year and we're not playing anybody outside the conference uh, right now, but I think it's good on the Big Ten to diversify the talent and, mm -hmm. and get more teams up there that are competitive yeah. for us to really play and, and play quality teams when we do play in conference games. It's so. much more of a parity this year aside from Ohio State and Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. the big thing to look out for is can Wisconsin play next? week because if they miss one more game they can't play in the Big Ten Championship you have to play at least six games so Wisconsin it's make or break time now to get these cases behind them and play a football game because if they want to play in the Big Ten title game likely against Ohio State they've got to play the rest of their games from here on out who would be the next person in line for that yeah it'd be interesting to see who comes out of the West I mean right now Northwestern is a 3-0 and football program you've got other teams throughout the West that have been playing you know, not terribly. I mean, it, it's hard to see past Wisconsin because the talent level does drop off. But, I mean, undefeated teams like Northwestern could make a case for playing in that game. Interesting. I know Whitney will be excited about that. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> all right, Justin, thank you so much. Um, thank you all so much for being with us this evening. We will see you back here 
next week as we take on Maryland. Go there. It's a 330 <laughs> game, so the times will be all weird. So we'll yeah. let you know exactly when we'll do um, pre and post game uh, sometime this week, probably Wednesday during our Buckeye breakdown with Coach Bill Conley. Um, tune in tomorrow morning if you want to see more highlights. Or is Jared coming up next on television on the broadcast side of things? He just might be, yeah. Okay, so tune into the broadcast <laughs> side of things if you aren't there watching it. We have um, newscasts going on right now. Jared is at Ohio Stadium right now. Tune in and watch him. And then stay tuned for SNL after. Bye.